so for some reason the audio on my destiny 2 is not working so you guys are just gonna hear some youtube audio library sounds so it's been a week since final shape has come out and i think after a week i think it's about time to give my own opinion on it and i'm gonna be honest this is really good it's definitely way better than lifefall was when it first came out like it immediately it's already better i think when i was doing the campaign for lightfall i don't know something about it just didn't seem right like it was good i i enjoyed it when it first came out if i'm being honest the final shape story compared to lightfall is leagues beyond better and that's not even me being biased because it is the end of the 10 year light and dark saga it's just genuinely better i think the location is better i think the abilities you get is better from the new prismatic class I think just the overall story is better. I mean, just the cinematic that you get, like, in the beginning, like, I think, like, the very first mission, Final Shape, is, s like, bro, the cinematic is so much better than anything I have ever seen in Lightfall. And like I said before, when I, I did the same exact type of review for Lightfall, and I genuinely said that the only things I enjoyed about the campaign were all the cutscenes that The Witness was in. I remember that now correct me if i'm wrong right because i feel like i remember saying that but best parts were with the witnesses cutscenes. and for the final shape i mean i feel like everything about it was so good i can't really put a finger on what was my favorite part yet i think i need to like digest that a little more but i have played on all three of my classes titan warlock and hunter so i feel like i should give a review on how what i think about all three i'm gonna be honest when i say this I think Hunter was the hardest to get through the campaign with. And that's not to say that the like it has nothing to do with my skill level because I'm always doing end game activities like it's nothing really crazy to me honestly. But for some reason with the prismatic class, I'm going to be honest, I dislike the Hunter prismatic class like the most. I I genuinely think out of all 3, I think the Hunter's prismatic is the most disappointing. If we're talking about like what it offers yeah let's just look at the prismatic class so if we're talking about the arrangement of ults that we can choose from obviously golden gun is really good if you're doing some like i guess strikes or something silence of squall is really good deadfall is always amazing so in my opinion i think the best two supers here are golden gun and deadfall you can use either one of them and you can pair it with you know celestial nighthawk you could pair this with gear falcons uh or maybe omnioculus whatever suits your needs personally i like to run the celestial uh nighthawk i'm actually testing out a build right now so i'm not really running it but i think all these other supers are really disappointing obviously with strand and stasis you can't get anything else but at least you know give us an option to choose out of all the supers from all these other subclasses at least to give us the more i guess you could say variety because i'm gonna be honest storm's edge is really disappointing when they first showed it off uh a couple months ago in their video documentary i was like wow this really looks like a cool super it's gen it's genuinely so much more different than all the other supers that arc has for hunter but using it now it's very disappointing honestly i don't really like to use it but moving on to like the transcendence stuff the transcendence for all classes is such a cool design i i think it's genuinely so it's like a second super in my opinion but if we're talking about differences it's the nades so each of the three classes have different nades and in my opinion i think hunter has the worst prismatic grenade it's it's just not good i mean it's good if you stick it onto something because they get both the scorch and the stasis slow on them and they could eventually either ignite or freeze but in my opinion i think this is the worst but i i like how you can choose from different uh melees and grenades from all the other classes i think this is really cool i haven't unlocked everything yet i'm still working on it but i like these aspects also you know i haven't unlocked these other aspects but i've i've used all of them before except for ascension which is i think it's a new one this is definitely a new one from this expansion, but it's, it's fun to use. Now, with the fragments, they're a little weird and confusing, but half of them are literally stuff that we already have. 
just for, you know, Prismatic. That's my genuine take on the Prismatic class. I think it's so good. Honestly, I don't even want to use any of my other, like, subclasses. Like, I have all these builds on the side here for all my, like, regular subclasses. I don't even feel like using them because Prism Prismatic is so good. With the final shape also came new additions such as new exotic activities, new activities in the free roam sandbox, and also new vendors. So if we go back to the vendor over here, uh, their name is Micah 10. Now, when I first was introduced to Micah 10, I was like, okay, they're just going to give us bounties and stuff like that. Okay, whatever. I didn't realize that you can do these bounties and get red borders from them. So they're essentially like a red border farm. And I'm not gonna lie, I did a lot of it. I got like nine patterns out of all of them. Actually, no, I think I finished out two weapons from it and now I need only one weapon from it. I think it's the hand cannon, the fusion rifle, and something else. I, I think it's the sword. So you, essentially what you do is you just grab the bounty, do like this little seven step thing and you get to choose your reward after and i'm not gonna lie it's a very high chance to get a red border from it now the thing that you see here ghost recovered it says 12. i found out when i was you know playing that you can actually use these to find a way to either get maybe the geometry puzzles you can get the prismatic chest after completing it. it it's on and it introduces you to the cyst uh cave system so cysts are kind of like a secondary lost sector i guess you could say they're not very much a lost sector but they are similar to it to it so with a cyst instead of just you know clear cut linear you basically have to get to the end and fight the boss with the cyst it's basically like i guess you could say a set of challenges that you have to complete to then fight the boss and then complete it. it it's it's like it's like a lost sector but with a mechanic to it. it it's it's weird to explain but i i enjoyed a lot uh def definitely a lot of potential to do things here another thing the pathfinder this is a new thing that they introduced this expansion and i have to say i like this a lot better than the eight bounty pinnacle a week thing that they used to do for each of the vendors I know they switched it around to just be like complete three matches to get the first set of rewards from the vendors. But honestly, I like this a lot more to get Pinnacle Gear. It is so much easier. Depending on like the difficulty of the challenges, I can finish this in either like one or two matches. It's so good. Now, this is just for the Pale Heart, which is the new location. So let me show you the actual thing I'm talking about. The Pathfinder for the ritual activities is all connected. As you can see here, this is literally only through Nightfall or just Vanguard activities in general. Like I literally did all this just in the Vanguard activities. It was that easy. And the fact that I can keep resetting it for just 10K is it's ridiculous. Like I could just farm pinnacle gear from this. Of course, I can always participate and get the powerful gear tier one, two and three by just completing these activities. But at the same time, this Pathfinder thing it just it feels a lot more rewarding for me in my opinion along with the pathfinder they also have these things called traveler's blessings so if you don't know uh you can receive traveler mods and when you're in the pale heart free roaming there's going to be these hands sticking out the ground which you can plant this luminous seed in and then activate a buff so when they ask for an activated buff it's going to be one of these. So these flickering blessings are going to be your active buffs. So like sprinting for a short time causes you to become amplified while your amplified melee damage creates lightning bolts, which damage nearby combatants. This is constant. This stays on constantly, like forever, unless you're not in the pale heart. I, I, don't, I don't know if these work outside of the pale heart. In the pale heart, these are on all the time. You just need to, you know, proc them. Now, the pale blessings is the ones that you need to plant the luminous seeds for and activate them for. So for here, upon interaction with the traveler's flower, gain a temporary buff that randomly provides the effects of one of the other pale blessing mods. Obviously, you can choose which and like which one of these pale blessing mods that you can choose from. Like this one gain a temporary buff for super ability regeneration, which I think is really good. Uh, but Depending on your play style, you might choose something else. The next thing I want to mention is the weapons that came along with this expansion. 
So there's a whole list of like weapons that you could get. Uh, I, I know here you could get no hesitation, bold endings. You could get the call, which are all cool weapons. I mean, it's a rocket loaded sidearm. Like that sounds crazy. As you can see, boom, one shot, boom, one shot. And it takes special ammo too. I don't think we've had a special ammo sidearm since the Forerunner, uh, which is basically just the 30th anniversary sidearm. It's it's basically it's basically from Halo, if we're being honest. Uh, but I think my favorite guns from this is the LMG and the No Hesitation Healing Rifle. Bro, that healing rifle is it, it's so fun to use not only is it such a genuine like it's genuinely such a fun gun to use but like the damage output on it and the healing just makes it so much better and even when you craft it and enhance the abilities you can make it so you can get restoration too which is still kind of insane and if you think about it not only can you pack a healing nade but if you're playing a warlock you can literally have a healing rift, a healing nade, and then you can have, let's say, that glaive from the Witch Queen, which pro pops down a healing turret. And then you can have an auto rifle that, that heals you on so like somebody else. Like that, that's four sources of healing on just basically one person and a half. Like... That's kind of crazy. But speaking of weapons, uh, recently they just activated this reset. The ability to get class item exotics. So if you don't know what a class item is, a hunter, it's your cloak. It's basically the fifth slot on your armor. Everybody knows that there's only been exotics for these four slots. Helmet, arms, chest, and legs. What a lot of people don't know is that there used to be class item exotics back in the day. I, I, I can't remember if it was D1 or year one of Destiny 2, but there used to be class item exotics and they took it out. Now they brought them back with two exotic perks from other items. I'm not going to lie. I got a pretty good fucking roll on mine. I got Assassin's Cowl and Liar's Handshake perks on my exotic class item. It, it's I'm not going to lie. It's it's freaking broken. And the fact that you could turn exotics into artifice armor now is even more fucking busted. It's insane, bro. Like, I I genuinely, this is probably the most fun I've had with Destiny in, since I started, honestly. It, it's just insane, man. I, I also forgot to mention uh, the LMG. The LMG is a strand LMG, which I don't think we've had yet. I think this is the first of its kind. It can roll with Envious Assassin. And I think it can also roll with Target Lock or Vorpal. I've tested this out. Without an enhanced Envious Assassin, you can put 212 rounds in the mag at one time. So you can literally shoot 200 rounds for DPS if you really wanted to for with that Strand LMG. I, I think this is such a good expansion. Now let me, let me get to the Warlock and Titan side of this. So for the Warlock Prismatic, it's, it's a little different, but it follows the same concept. In my opinion, I think this has a lot more better supers to use. Song of Flame is really good. It has its ups and downs, in my opinion. I th I think the positive about it is that you it's a roaming super that doesn't take away your ability to still use your regular weapons. In my opinion, I think you can really use this to solo activities and add clear very fast. I, I know the nerfs to Well of Radiance hit a little bit but it's still viable i've i've tested it out it, it this this is still usable I, I obviously winter's wrath is not that good but storm trance eh song of flame good nova bomb good i wish it was a vortex nova bomb but cataclysm is still good needle storm is amazing now going on to the nades this is honestly the second best nade in my opinion for the prismatic classes because it's basically a vortex void nade that does stasis damage so it suppresses and it also freezes it, it's actually so good and one of the new aspects that they added to was the helion or the hellion one and basically every time you activate your class ability you get a little uh solar like soul that lobs mortars at things and i think two to three mortars actually ignites it is so good and it tracks too which is so stupid and also another a combo that uh w one of my mutuals actually put on for me is putting on lightning surge with arcane needle now if you guys don't know arcane needle actually stacks up to three times 
in the reserves. So you can basically lightning surge three times. <laughs> it, it's honestly insane. Now, obviously, they also all the classes have their class item exotic. I got my own. I got, I got a couple on hand. I have these two right now because I'm trying to figure out a way to use them. But I have Innermost Light and Star Eater for mine, which I think is going to be really good, especially since right now I'm using a healing build because survivability. And then I have this one, which is Assassin's Cowl and then Synthoseps, which I think is going to be really good with that Lightning Surge, in my opinion, especially for like ad clear or like horde modes. I it, man, these 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 these, <laughs> these exotics are so good. And then the speaker site, which I think is also really good. It spawns a, a restorative healing turret. Honestly, wish it healed a lot faster. You know, pops out the, the healing turret ammo a lot faster. But it's still a pretty good exotic. But I think I'm going to switch around the build and use something else. Now, for the Titan, I mean, all of these supers are really good. Hammer of Souls always been valid. I, I still think you should use a different super for Solar especially since Pyro Gale is out. But all of these other ones are so viable. Like, you have Thunder Crash, a Blade Fury, you have the new Twilight Arsenal, you have Glacial Quake, and you have Hammer of Soul. These are all, literally, not a single bad ult here. It, it's really good. I, I genuinely think Titan has the best Prismatic class, especially since their nade is basically just, a, a basically an electric, a jolting shackle nade. It, like just hearing that is insane to hear it's the best prismatic grenade it has the best effects to it I, i'm still working on my titan i haven't really touched this since completing the campaign what i do know is my friend was telling me about this same way how the lightning surge works with the arcane needle you could do the same thing with frenzy blade and consecration i i saw my friend using this he was using uh i, I think it was what worm curious or worm god it, it's basically an exotic arm so he's using consecration right with the frenzied blade bro this guy is doing 120 k damage just off of the consecration itself these builds are going to be insane for transcendence like it, it's honestly so I, I can't stop saying it but it's so crazy what i do have to add though is the fact that in the campaign my only negative i have to say about this campaign is the fact that they gave zavala the smallest rally barricade it, it it's honestly so goofy looking like that honestly that's like minus a thousand aura for the titan class because that that's honestly insane how how are you the titan vanguard putting up a small rally barricade like that when in red war you literally tanked a cabal warship with a bubble it doesn't make sense but this is genuinely such a good expansion. I have no complaints whatsoever. Except for like a little nitpicks, but th it's so good. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoy. Because I definitely enjoy. Th this is such a good expansion. If they keep doing things like this, I don't see Destiny failing at all. And I, I, I keep mentioning this. It's the fact that we had to threaten not to buy Final Shape for them to make this... The, the decisions that they had to to come out with final shape the fact that we had to threaten them with not purchasing their dlc for them to actually delay it and give it the time that it needs to make it the way it is which is amazing and i think it's such a good finale to the saga and i'm glad they made this decision other than that i'll see you in the next one bye